In Madagascar, it only takes one storm to transform roads into an impassable quagmire. Some towns find themselves totally cut off. To counter this isolation, which holds back development, the people have turned to the sea. The large island of Madagascar lies 400 kilometers off the southern African coast. The town of Antala stretches along a narrow coastal strip confined between the vastness of the Indian Ocean and the virgin forest covering the east of the country. The large island has always attracted sailors from various regions. These children belong to different communities, Chinese, Indian and Arab. At home, their grandparents sometimes still speak in the language of their home country. All the children speak Malagasy, of course, and lessons are taught in French. The sea has two types of movement. Two types of movement. What are they? The flood and the ebb. Later, when you grow up, you'll build your own boat. You'll give your boat a name. What will you call your boat? White shark. White shark, that's great. Red sea. Red sea? What else? Albatross. Albatross. If the children of Antala dream about the boat they'll own, it's because they know that everything arrives here by boat. The region has a very humid equatorial climate. Clove, coffee and vanilla plantations are well developed here. But the road network hasn't kept pace with this expansion in farming, the main source of income for the Malagasy. The roads, where they exist, are often impassable. Here, a journey is measured in hours, not kilometers. Almost all trading therefore depends on the coasters, large or small, which connect the coastal villages. What's your best price for the mats? It's 5,000 francs. I can't do better than that. Yeah, your mats are wet. It's because of the journey on the boat, but they'll dry. <laughs> It's the custom to call boats in Madagascar dhows, in reference to the traditional craft introduced here by the Arabs in the 15th century. Wa is a boat builder. A few years ago, he started building small coasters by copying the fishing boats. At the moment, he has the task of building the biggest wooden boat ever made on the island. It's 35 meters long for a cargo of 200 tons. A real challenge. A boat like this means three or four years of guaranteed income for the workers in the boatyard. Wa works from memory with no plans. When he's not sure of something, he draws on the knowledge of old hands like his friend Jus. You see, the frame is a bit low here. You need to raise it up and support it. The shape of the hull isn't right here. And here, you need to bring it out. But first, you need to replace these two battens. They're broken. Jus has years of experience. He used to build dows with his father. As soon as he knew that the Antala boatyard was looking for qualified people, he came to live here with his family. How long a dow lasts will depend on the wood used and the skill of the carpenters. The choice of trees is crucial when making the curved shapes of the ribs. A hammer, a chisel, and many hours of work will still be needed to produce the skeleton of the boat. 
Wa and Jus both know that a dao's seaworthiness depends on the structure's shape. The boat must be well balanced. The carpenters are also tree fellers. Wa goes to the felling areas to choose his wood, which depends on the parts to be made. A hard wood is best for the keel and a softer wood for the cabin. After a period of intense deforestation, the island of Madagascar seems to have put in place a system for managing this natural heritage. Tree felling is now managed and rare species are protected. Jus knows that the resource isn't inexhaustible. So, in parallel with his carpenter's work, he accepted the invitation of a school in Antala to take part in a teaching project. The task is to build a canoe from laminated timber, a technique that uses less wood. Jus says this canoe should be of interest to the island's fishermen. Yes, I think so. As long as the caulking is done properly. No, just the outside. Yes, you must make the hull perfectly smooth. Yes, but first you put cotton in. You have to make a bevel with a chisel. This shouldn't be a problem. In Madagascar, rights and customs are omnipresent. Undertaking the construction of a boat, like any other project, must be done with the consent of the ancestors. Nothing is decided without their blessing. Away from prying eyes, the Chumbe ritual plunges the disciples into a trance that makes them receptive to messages from the hereafter. Generally, Boats leave Antala loaded with goods intended for export, and they return from Tamatav with essential foodstuffs in their holes. These dhows continue the history of the trading vessels which plied these waters in the 17th century loaded with spices. Vanilla, or black gold, was introduced to Madagascar at the end of the 19th century, making the town wealthy. As its export produced big profits, huge fortunes were made in record time. During the season, almost the whole town works, directly or indirectly, on vanilla. The pods are scolded to stop further ripening and to cleanse them of all impurities. They are then exposed in the sun, sorted, graded, and finally shipped in special packaging made of tin to preserve their freshness. Although most of the products are exported by sea, shipping can also be by air, especially for luxury products like this exceptional vanilla used by the great confectioners and chocolatiers of the world. In a few hours, these well-protected pods will be thousands of kilometers away from Antala. These days, the cargoes of the Dows are picturesque and varied. Vehicles, animals, building materials, food, and obviously passengers are all on board. The port of Antala is just a bay protected by a coral reef.
the skippers need to be experienced to pass through it. You need to be local. All the skippers of the boats here know it, because they've lived here. They started with fishing boats, so they know where the patch reefs are. There aren't any markers. You don't need to have qualified for naval school to be able to sail in this region. It's quite unusual. It's quite unusual here. We head south. On board, things get organized. All the passengers try to forget the constant rolling of the boat. The Malagasy call this shipping route the Sea Highway. It's a shortcut of several hundred kilometers to get to Tamata. I trade coconuts between Sambav and Tamatav. First, I have to hire a truck to take them to Antala. It's very expensive and the road isn't safe. You hire a truck, but in Antala, you have to catch the boat and there isn't always one there. That's true. Sometimes I wait two or three days, but generally never more than a week. The length of the crossing depends on the currents and the swell. It's 20 hours on average when conditions are good. The Indian Ocean has been kind. Tamatav is in sight. The boat will dock for as long as it takes to transfer the cargo, and then it will go back again. As for the inhabitants of Antala, they'll all be looking out to sea, waiting for the next boat. 